In this video, I'm going to show you how I keep a daily log of some of the things that I'm doing while staying in focus using Alfred, 10 lines of Python code, and one of my favorite note-taking apps. Let's get into it. What's up everybody, I'm Jay Miller. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're not gonna be talking about any type of, well, we are gonna be talking about development stuff, but we're gonna be talking more about the other thing that I do and I do a lot of, which is talking about productivity and being productive. I do think that everyone has the capability of being productive, and I thought what better way to prove that than to show you this weird and quirky way on how I keep a daily log. Now. You might be asking, what is a daily log? And it's simple. It's just a log of the things that I do on a daily basis. The interesting part about this, I actually keep two logs. I keep one on paper and I keep a digital one. And the reason I do that is they serve different purposes. The one on paper is just a quick reminder of the things that I've done throughout the day in context to the other days around them. On the digital side, I want to be able to link some of the individual pieces of information to other resources. This could be links, this could be bookmarks, this could be uh, files or, or whatever. And the way that I do that is by using a tool called Hookmark. Now, we're not gonna be talking about Hookmark in this. I've actually created some other videos about that. Now let's talk about the main driver of this workflow and that is Alfred. I've been using Alfred for probably eight years now. And when I say it's just consistently been there for me, it has, and I absolutely enjoy using it every single day. When I get a new computer, Alfred is one of the first applications that I install on that system. We're gonna create a really simple Alfred workflow, and I'm gonna show you what this does. I launch Alfred by using the magic you know, key command. For me, it's command shift. Then I'm gonna type in L, and I'm gonna type in some text there, like, I don't know, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hit enter, from there, I should see that note uh, in an ongoing list among other things that I was working on that day. So how did I do this? Let's start at the beginning. Now, the one caveat I will give to you on this is you do need to be a power pack user, which is a paid for service. Um, like I said, I've used it for seven years. I purchased a lifetime upgrade. And honestly, I think I've done it twice now, just not because they asked me to, but because I get so much value out of Alfred. Again, it's super important to my workflow. We're gonna activate Alfred, and instead of actually typing something, we're gonna hit Command Comma to open up the Preference pane. From there, we're gonna go over to Workflows, and we're going to hit the plus sign and go to Blank Workflow. After you create your blank workflow, you're gonna be asked to give it a name. I'm gonna to have to cheat a little bit because I already have one that's called Add to Daily Log. Uh, and then give it a little bit more information and hit save. From there, you're at this blank slate. You're gonna right click inside of that window and you're gonna go to input and keyword. This is going to be that L that I was talking about. Of course, you can make it whatever you want. I use L for log and then make sure you have uh, space after and then uh, parameters required. And from there, you just hit, you can add some text. I did add and then inside of braces query so that it shows me the text that I'm typing um, to daily log. And from there, you just hit save. Next, you're going to create the next block, which is a scripting block. Now, before we get to that, I want to mention there's something a little interesting about Mac OS now. Back in the day, Mac OS used to come with Python installed and that was great because you could always assume that Python was there. If you have a newer device, probably one in the last three years, uh, any of the M1 devices more than likely, you probably do not have Python installed by default. If you don't have it installed yet, you're going to need to install it. If you have Homebrew, you can do brew install Python, but if not, you can just do it the old fashioned way. Go to python.org, hit the downloads button, and then download the latest version. Everything that we're doing is in standard library and it has been for several years. So you don't need any special version for this. So I would just suggest downloading whatever the latest version is. Once you have Python installed from there, you're going to look in the description and copy or paste, or you can just follow along with me. I'm going to talk about these 10 lines of Python code. Um, but again, I do have a link in the description to where you can go and just copy and paste this code for yourself. Here they are, 10 lines. 
The first three are all about importing the different uh, modules that you need. For this, we're gonna need Sys, which is short for system, and it allows you to interact with your system. Pathlib, which is a library for dealing with paths or different files or folders on your computer. And then you're gonna need from date time, import date time. Uh, that's how we deal with dates and times. And that's how we'll know what today is. So the next two lines, we're going to figure out what the current date is and figure out what the path for our daily log file should be. And it's simple, we do date time dot today and then we're gonna pass that in using the string from time uh, function as well. And for that, you just want to do, I did year, month, day, which is percent sign Y, percent sign M, and then percent sign D, only the Y being capitalized there. But you can set it to whatever you want there. I'm going to provide a link in the description for Python date times, uh, because figuring out those different key key like values can be complicated from time to time. Trust me, I've been there, I totally get it. Next, you're going to use pathlib to say today's path or today path is equal to pathlib.path. And if you copied from the description that I gave you, uh, it'll have some paths already set out, but the easiest way to replace that is going to be go find a file in the path that you wanna add things to, it could be your documents or whatever, and just drag and drop it into that window. When you do that, it's going to give you the full path. Alfred doesn't know where your local path is, so you're not gonna be able to use your relative path. You have to provide the full one. After that, you should be all set, and then you're going to want to make sure that you provide inside of brackets using F strings today, which is the variable that we created of that date, and then whatever extension you want. You can use Markdown like I did, or you could even change that to something like text if you want to do plain text files or even something fancy like a task paper file. Next, you're going to want to check if the file exists already. And the way that we do that is we say, if not today path dot exists. We want a nice fancy title on the top that gives us what the actual date was. And we have to make sure that that path exists in order to do that. So we're gonna to do today path dot write. And then and again, inside of F strings, we're gonna do a uh, hashtag, which it just formats it if you're using markdown format. And then today, if you're using something like task paper, that might be a little bit different, but uh, if you're playing around with that, you should kind of know what you want your header to look like. And then we're gonna do the magic incantation. The most important part of this, this is what adds our special code to our special text to the document itself. That is with open today path, we're gonna do a comma and then A for append, so we don't overwrite our text every time. All of that as F, F dot write, and then this funky little F string here that's F dash system argument in the first index and a new line. What does that mean? Well, the F string I've kind of glossed over, that's just how we add variables into our strings. The dash is going to make it a part of a list. And then the system argument value or sysargv is that piece of Alfred text that we added in. And that's it, that's all the Python code. Now from there, you might wanna test this. The way that you test something in Alfred is to uh, go up to the top right corner, there's a little bug looking symbol, that's your debug window, click on that, and then it should pop up at the bottom below. And then you wanna activate Alfred, and then you'll do the incantation, the, you know, for me it was L space, and then maybe write this is a test or something like that. You should see some form of output happening in the debug window. If you don't get an issue, hey, everything was great. Otherwise, maybe you messed up in the string formatting or maybe you uh, didn't provide the path right, go back and check those variables and uh, try it again. From there, we can open up whatever application we're using. Now, I mentioned the text app. I'm using a tool called MV Ultra. The thing I like about doing this is it's just a plain text file. If I wanted to move to something like BB Edit, or if I wanted to move to something like Task Paper, or even something with like superpowers and extensions and stuff like Obsidian, like I can do that. It's all plain text and it should just 
work. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have questions about making it work or uh, how you could adapt it into your own system and do special things with it, let me know in the comments below. I've been Jay Miller and until next time, I'll talk to you later.